to that. Yes. 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 Amen. I am thankful for those nail scar hands and those nail scar Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs in 11.30 that the fruit of righteousness is the fruit of life. Yes. And he who is wise wins souls. Amen. To reach for the old rugged cross is to be someone that's reaching for the lost. Yes. I'd like to go ahead and dismiss Sunday school today. We're thankful for our young and our teachers and sacrifice and put out so much effort. Good to have Lonnie back with us. Yeah. And I, as I was walking over to the church a little late, she was pulling in and gave me a very vigorous wave, and I was so excited to see her. Amen. Amen. There are eternal ramifications to everything we do, although we don't always apply that sentiment. And it's very easy to lose days lose time and not realize how precious it was. So if you have your Bibles, we're from John 14. I'm just really just going to read uh, the first uh, three verses there.
the sense of loss of innocence that day will never be forgotten and I will never forget. Four planes were hijacked. Flight 11 struck the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. Flight 175 struck the South Tower at 9.03. Flight 77 struck the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m. The intended target of Flight 93 was never reached because a group of passengers had united together with the undeniable truth of facing physical pain, bodily harm, death. I guess they decided not to go quietly. Then they spoiled the hijackers' plans. Passenger Todd Beamer's statement, let's roll, echoes the sentiments of many Americans as we promise to never forget. It is said, and I know there has been residual deaths, I think you use that term, because of the the things that were stirred up in the air that day, the chemicals, the pollutants, and the particles. But on that day, 2,977 people were killed. What a day. What a day. It mirrors looks like December 7th, 1941, a day that will forever live in infamy. There are just some days that will forever mark our lives, affect our lives, and even our outlook on our lives. Now today, because of the advent of 24-7 news media, the internet, and personal cell phones, we are being surrounded with depressing news. Worldwide catastrophes and discouraging information is available every minute. So today our lives are bombarded with world negativity 24-7. Paul encourages us to flip that script. Romans 12 and 21, he says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. <laughs> well, can I be humanly transparent? Hey, Paul. Easier said than done, buddy. <laughs> Having served for decades in Africa, a very elderly ministry couple returning to America to retire. After countless years of faithfulness and service, they had no pension and their health was failing. They were worried and understandably discouraged. By chance, they were on the same ship as President Theodore Roosevelt, who was returning from one of his African hunting expeditions. No one paid any attention to this faithful missionary couple, but all kinds of fanfare and accolades accompanied the president and his entourage. During the voyage, the missionary said to his wife, Man, something's wrong with this. We've given our lives in service to God in Africa all these years, and no one around us cares a thing about it. Here, this man comes back from a hunting trip, and everybody makes a big to-do over him. Nobody gives two hoots about us. When the ship docked in New York, a huge band was waiting to greet the president. The mayor came out, and other dignitaries were there. The following day, the newspapers were full of pictures of the president's arrival. But no one was there for the missionary couple. In fact, they quietly slipped unnoticed off the ship and found somewhere very inexpensive to sleep. That night, the elderly missionary said to his wife, I can't take this. God is not treating us fairly. 
His wife replied, why don't you talk to the Lord about that? So in the coming of a husband, he did just that. <laughs> he went to pray to bring his complaint before God. Some time later, he returned, but his face was different. His expression had changed. Wife took notice and says, Well, what happened? The missionary said, The Lord settled in with me. I told him how bitter I was that this president received this tremendous homecoming from a simple hunting church made me bitter. Here we are arrived after years of labor and sacrifice. And no one even met us at the dock. No one was, gave us even so much as a hello. When I finished complaining to God, it was very apparent that I felt his presence and his as though he had laid his hand upon my shoulder and he simply said to me, but you're not home yet. I guess in the frail of me, me just being another pro today, I want to remind you this is not our home. This is not your and this is not my finish line. Everything around you is temporary. This earthly life is like a vapor and it's just waiting to pass. The time we spend here is nothing more than a journey toward our home. There's a whole different and greater world beyond the physical realm that you and I see and touch. Yes. This world is just temporary. Amen. If that world is far more permanent than everything you yes. see around you right now, yes. there is a city. And in that heavenly world, a place with a lot of souls. That city where there will never come a night. It's a place where God will make everything right. He will right all the wrongs of this life. And all the injustices of this world will be fixed. It's a place where we will know true life in all its richness and fullness. The city will be our home forever. And our citizenship is heaven. We were created for that place. We were created for eternity with Jesus. This whole life with all its heartaches, pain, and sorrow is really nothing more than a journey that gets us from here. Yes, I'll admit it, I'll say it, I, it's a perilous journey that there will be pain and there, there will be some joys. There will be triumphs and there will be struggles. Well, then you can count on that. The road is going to get a little tough from time to time. There's an enemy who wants to derail you. Yeah. He wants to turn you aside. He, he wants to make you miss that final destination. Yes. Right. It's poetic that Job Penn, the book of Job Penn's yet a man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. There will be trouble. Yeah. Heartache. Pain. Eternal rejoicing comes in the morning. Yes. Psalm, the song is said in Psalm 30, for his anger endureth for a moment. Yes. But in his favor is life. Yes. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. One songwriter said, Won't it be wonderful when we get over yonder? Another one says, 
when it seems like your whole world and the whole world is falling apart. There will be times when it seems as if the darkness is about to swallow you up whole. Jesus says, trust me. I have not abandoned you. Trust me. I have not forsaken you. Trust me. I will never leave thee nor forsake you. Trust me. As a matter of fact, let me just remind you, I'm preparing a place for you. You're not home yet. Oh, you're not home yet. It may be a day, but it's not that day. Jesus is saying the same thing that Paul reiterated to the Corinthian believers in 1 Thessalonians. He says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another. Turn your name and say, it ain't that day. We ain't home yet. We're not home yet. Oh, no, no, no. You need to encourage someone like that. That person next to you may be facing cancer right now. Maybe may be facing pain. Today's not that day. It ain't home yet. We ain't home yet. Don't let this get you there. Thank you. 
blown it out a few times with preaching as an evangelist, but I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it's right just to lift up our eyes towards heaven. Yes. Amen. And to remember where this journey is taking us. To yes. remind ourselves, there is my Father's house. This yes. ain't it. Yes. This ain't it. But yes. he's, he's gone to prepare a place for me. He said, in John 22, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Can you see it? The Greek word translated as mansions is a word that means dwelling place or abode. Its significant characteristics is the sense of preeminence. You see, this life is temporary. But heaven is permanent. Jesus is preparing a permanent home for you and I. Jesus is preparing a permanent place for all the saints of God. Yeah. Jesus is preparing. Don't, don't let your heart be troubled. This ain't home. He's making home for yeah. us. Yeah. So when the journey is over, when we reach the other side, we will be home forever. Yeah. Yeah. No more talk. Right. No more heartache. Yeah. No more long, tiresome journeys. No more getting up to go to work to pick up garbage. No more getting up to go to work to adjust backs. No more getting up going to work to do whatever it is that you've got to do. Day in day. No more classroom. Good night, those little kids. Hey, I hear what I'm saying. No more patience. You better come in with God knows what. And you're afraid you're going to take it home to your family. When we get there, when we get there, we will finally. Be home. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, they say that when you're a child, and I will testify that I agree with this sentiment, you never know the security of a long lasting, long term home if you move around a lot. Yeah. If you're always going from place to place, like I did with my family being military. We never stopped anywhere long enough for me to put down roots. I don't have lifelong friends here. I don't have lifelong friends much places at all because we were never anywhere longer than four years. And it states that if that's been your life, you will never feel a sense of home. You'll never know the real meaning of being. Yes. So really, no matter where you are in this world, that may be true. But understand, heaven is a place where you're in trouble. You'll find the way to that That all. There will be no more journey. When we get over yonder, then no more uncertainty when we get over there. So what Jesus said, what Jesus was saying was when your heart is trouble, remember heaven. When you're in pain, remember heaven. When you're almost overwhelmed, remember the permanence of heaven. When, when this life feels like it's about to get the best of you. Remember where you're going. It's going to be worth it all. Remember, I know there's pain. I know there's sorrow, but this ain't all. <laughs> we get to go over yonder. Hallelujah. Ah, look, 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 look. Well, I don't know about that. Well, listen, I don't know about you, but I kind of learned and adjusted myself to look on the calendar and see what the next three-day weekend is. Yeah. It adjusts me just a little bit. Yeah. Almost like a chiropractic adjustment for my spirit. <laughs> if I can just get to that three day week. Yeah. If I just get through, oh yeah, it's come. Come on, can I get an amen? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. If I, let me just get the facts here. Yeah. Oh, we can just sit, man, I can get a day off. I can just hang out. We can lock the doors. Yeah. We can sleep in a little bit. Yeah. Go in there, cook up some turkey and stuff, and then maybe get some pie. Oh, let me just get all you got. Thanksgiving's coming. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, you know what? Christmas is coming. 
I'll tell you, just, it's just sometimes we, we, we realize it's that vacation, it's that three-day weekend, it's that moment of pause yeah. that's coming that keeps us going. Blah, blah. Listen, if we can plan yeah. for that next day off with excitement, for a reprieve from it all, then we can right. definitely realize it's right. that and think of heaven to get all. You know what? I get to do this too. I get to do this. Heaven is a part of the thing. Heaven is the Thanksgiving of all Thanksgivings. Heaven is the Labor Days of all Labor Days. Memorial Day is the Memorial And heaven will be a more Memorial Day of all Memorial Days. And you talk about a Christmas vacation. I wonder if some of you think that God's a heaven right now. I 
going to Thanksgiving with expectation. She, if you haven't had it, she makes. Oh Lord, she makes the best. She makes the best cheesecake on the planet. She knocked one out this past week. They don't even know it, but I got some massive beast hitting at the house right now. Work smarter than I'm hard. <laughs> I'm smart. I grabbed that cheesecake out of it, wrapped it up in the bowl, and put the pan on my sink so they think it was gone. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah, it was. I've been a couple banging around up in here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure every man in here has an expectation for what they're going to enjoy at the next holiday. Your wife has something she makes. Mine makes a mean apple pie. She put that duck apple pie with that little cinnamon like Christmas stuff she puts on top. It's so good. We have she I don't even mad. Charlie's out of town. She goes out of town and makes it all I ain't one of those a lot. But he's so bad when she shows up in the pie. It's a good vibe. You can live off that bad boy. Yeah. So I know what to expect. That day. Let me tell you. It says in First Corinthians two and nine. But as is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. Now I don't know about you. I've celebrated a few holidays. And I'm probably still not done hiding cheesecake up in here. I'm not, I'm not beyond hiding that chocolate cookies and stuff like that. I'm still going to do it. I'm going to sneak the best piece of roast or turkey. I'm going to do it. I, I, I'm sorry. If my frailty, you're going to have trouble because I'm going to be sneaking. But we're in for a mind Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> 
ever again. Yes. No pain, no death, no yes. sorrow. Yes. 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 This may not mean much to you. No more pills over there. Yes. No more doctors. Yes. No more tests to run. Oh, no more procedures. <laughs> Can I get a witness of any man over 50? Yeah, come on, ladies. <laughs> Can I get a witness of some? No more procedures. No more exams. No more poking and prodded by a stranger. Finally home. Finally home. And never have to say goodbye again.
you don't need no cell phones over there either. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gonna be no alarm clock. Yeah. There's a funny story. Ooh, yeah, is that me brought this up? train that he took an engagement. Might not be that long, but well, no problem. The ticket collector stopped the Prince's ticket. Albert Einstein, being the brainiac that he was, was preoccupied with his preparation. Well, he didn't have his ticket in his hand. With great embarrassment, he rushed through his coat and his pockets. He couldn't find his ticket. The conductor said, <laughs> he kind of laughed and said, You know, we all know who you are, Dr. Einstein. Pretty sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. Everything's okay. And with a smile, he turned and walked down the aisle, punching other tickets. But as his custom was, just before he left that car to go to the next car, he looked back over the car he just been through, and he saw Dr. Albert Einstein down on his hands and knees, looking under the seat, still trying to find his ticket. The conductor realized, so he went back and said,
wants to come and just catch a glimpse of heaven. And I want to close with this For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then when we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever. And so shall we ever. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I may not know how I'm getting there, but I know where I'm going. Bless the Lord.